Hello, Ramsey families. This is the recorded version of the information session that I hosted last week. I appreciate all of the families who joined me live and took in the information and asked great questions. It has helped me to fill in a few missing gaps of information that uh, I hadn't initially addressed. So thank you for the Q&A and all of the input that I've received from parents um, up until this point. So I'm going to go through this information in a more abbreviated way, and then I will send out um, an inf a letter and some an additional recording for families to have in their library of resources. So thank you very much for viewing this information session, recorded version, and it will be more abbreviated than <laughs> the actual session was that it itself. All right, so the objectives of this information session are to inform parents and guardians of updates and new information pertaining to primarily the attendance and engagement procedures that we're imp implementing on uh, for online activities and completion of schoolwork um, at Ramsey. I also am reviewing the fall fun activities for Ramsey, COVID-19 response and safety procedures, some of our planning around PBIS, character education and social emotional learning, that's SEL and local assessment information. Finally, we'll wrap up with some celebrations. So thanks for attending. So this is primarily the lion's share of our, of our information session. Ramsey has welcomed everyone back after a, a lengthy closure and we have a unique learning model that is not as traditional as our just daily brick and mortar. So, over the past five weeks of school, Ramsey faculty and myself have been monitoring how students are getting acclimated to the online environment. And we've been <clears throat> carefully considering how we might monitor and record attendance and engagement or participation in the online components of our instructional programming this year. So the first thing I'd like to do is really break down what attendance is versus what participation or engagement is. They are, for the purposes of this presentation and the purposes of our protocols that we were implementing, they really are different. Um, attendance is a state mandated reporting metric that all public school entities in Pennsylvania are, record, are required to um, report to the state. So attendance is, is a very critical piece of information that we have to maintain uh, to, to report. Uh, we really did have to clearly define what this looks like while also ensuring that we are asking students to produce school work uh, to account for that attendance so that students can continue on a path of growth academically and socially. So let me break down this slide for you. Cohort A and B students who attend the building are counted as in attendance when they come to the building that day, on those days, I should say. So they show up at the building on the day they're assigned you know, for their cohort, they're going to be recorded as in attendance that day. Now, all cohort students have virtual days. It's those Wednesdays and, and then of course the Thursday, Friday or the Monday, Tuesday. So those three days that they're at home are considered virtual days. And what Ramsey has implemented is the teachers will post daily assignments for students to complete in Google Classroom. Students will earn attendance each day by completing two of their daily core assignments. That's a minimum, two. Core assignments are ELA, math, science and social studies. Gate students, those are our full-time online learners. They have to account for their attendance each day by their participation online. So students who have, uh, who are full-time gate, they will be marked in attendance every day by completing two core lessons at minimum. Students have a full day to complete their virtual lessons because we know work um, is likely being done in the evening hours. We know all of you have very busy schedules. So teachers record attendance the next morning. So for example, 
is a teacher posts lessons for the day on Thursday, the students who are working virtually that day have all day and into the evening hours to complete that work. As long as the work is turned in at bedtime and they go to sleep, the next morning when the teacher comes into work, they will record attendance based on the lessons that have been submitted the night before. So in summary, two daily lessons of core content submitted in Google Classroom will earn you attendance credit for our attendance reporting procedures. <clears throat> if you're monitoring illness, let's say you're a cohort student in cohort A and it's a Monday morning and you're showing some symptoms of illness. It's important for us to work as a Ramsey family and a community to be super vigilant about monitoring symptoms prior to sending a child to school. So I encourage all of you to make the decision if you're monitoring symptoms of illness to choose to stay home, monitor and make that a virtual day. You, you can retain attendance credit if you just simply email Miss Cindy and the teacher as soon as possible and explain, for example, Joey will be working online today. He's not feeling well, but he's well enough to do work online. In those cases, a teacher will post activities on, on the Google Classroom and the child can be marked in attendance if they complete those two minimum core assignments for the day. If a student is at home due to illness, they don't feel well and they don't, and they are not well enough to work that day, they do not have to complete attendance. They do not have to complete assignments that day. Simply email Ms. Cindy and the homeroom teacher and explain that your child's not feeling well and they are going to work to get caught up on another day. That email will serve as an excuse and that absence will be marked as an excused absence. Where attendance becomes a critical concern is when multiple unexcused absences accumulate for a student. So we really want to try to mitigate that proactively and we do have a response protocol in place so that it doesn't lead so that it, uh, a collection of absences doesn't lead to truancy. In the event that absences do accrue and lead to truancy, Aaron Smith, our Ramsey social worker, will continue to address truancy concerns as he always has. So in summary, for virtual learning days, that's gate and cohort students when they're in their virtual days at home. In order to earn full attendance for the day, you must complete two minimum core lessons, submit them, turn them in in the Google Classroom to get your attendance credit for that day. There was a question um, during the info session about, well, you know, what if other schools are just having my child complete a form? A Google form is used as well at, at Ramsey for students to kind of go on during morning work and log their attendance for the day. But my the logic and rationale behind pushing a little more and requiring the submission of assignments is for the, the true academic benefit of your child. If your child is not completing the work, they're not demonstrating their ability to share show that they've mastered skills. It is critical that children who are attending and participating in school are not just coming to a virtual lesson and saying I'm done for the day, but actually taking what they've learned and applying it to the lesson so that they can earn credit for um, making progress in the curriculum. By only having them fill out a log and letting them go, what we, what we don't want is to create a situation where it's easy to fall behind on submitting work. If we just had a pure attendance log in place and work didn't have to be submitted in order to earn attendance. We're setting a child up to very quickly fall behind. Monday not submitting work turns into Tuesday not submitting work. And we, we truly believe the K-4 level uh, while they're gathering and, and taking in so many skills that they need to apply that that day to the project or lesson that's been assigned to show their mastery and then submit. So that, that's why there's an assignment component, the completion of assignments uh, attached to attendance. 
Engagement and participation. It, so teachers have been asked to clearly designate which activities are optional and which activities are worth a grade. At, attendance versus engagement. Um, here, here's how I define that. A student can struggle to fully engage in lesson completion while still being marked in attendance. And here's how that can happen. A student logs on for, for Monday's lessons. They have a ELA lesson, a math lesson, and a social studies lesson posted that day. Well, if they complete their ELA and their math lesson and submit them in the classroom, they have earned attendance that day. But if they fail to complete that social studies lesson, then they aren't fully participating, they have a missing assignment. That missing assignment will count negatively against their participation grade for that social studies course. So what we're trying to do is really get students to a point where they can participate fully 100% every day so that their attendance is being recorded, but also they're earning full participation and maximizing their earning, their potential to earn the highest grade and to learn the most content through their output. So if attendance is earned, but remaining lessons are skipped, the teacher will let you know that these assignments are, need to be completed for a grade. I don't want anybody blindsided. We'll have a protocol in place for teachers to utilize to let you know if assignments are being skipped or missed so that we can address that proactively at the classroom level. <clears throat> So full engagement and participation is equally as important as attendance because it allows for students to be exposed to all grade level skills and content as the year progresses. Again, that's that goes back to why at Ramsey we're we're recommending that two lessons be completed in order to account for attendance. It keeps kids on the path of completing lessons and demonstrating their learning so that they can earn a grade and we don't have any issues with um, them being successful and moving on to the next grade level next year. We are trying to keep in mind, we're trying to recover skills and close gaps in learning. So while enduring the effects of the pandemic and our efforts to support full student engagement and participation as well as attendance will come in a tiered approach starting at the classroom level to ensure that we are being responsive to your needs as a family. So this is our tiered approach for attendance, engagement, and participation. And like I said, it will start at the classroom level and will escalate from there. We hope all issues can be resolved at the classroom level because that's truly where, you know, the learning and the dynamic is the strongest. Um, the teacher needs to understand any challenges or barriers that you're experiencing and, and of course, we, you know, we and we need to understand the challenges and, and barriers you're facing as a family that might be impeding attendance and, and engagement. And once a teacher knows that, they are happy to work with you. This is not intended to be uh, punitive or to serve unfair consequences. We truly want this approach to addressing attendance and engagement to occur starting at the classroom level. It will occur through uh, a series of written notifications that will come to you via email. I have encouraged teachers to try to pick up the phone and call you first to talk about things, um, but always following up with an email to truly document, you know, what is missing, uh, what amount of attendance, um, you know, miss, missed days or absences have been recorded so that you're in front of the information. So you'll get a series of three notice notices um, attendance or engagement notice one, it will be from the teacher and it will list the concern and it will invite you to connect with the teacher to resolve the, the issue. Uh, if, if that doesn't go answered, a second notice and then subsequently a third notice will be sent, all with a list of the concerns, but also with an invitation to work together to address any barriers and create you know full accessibility and then work together to get caught up. If the notices are not addressed as a team and the teacher doesn't hear back from you, we will then involve the school counselor, Mrs. Martin. She has the capacity to work with you one-on-one -on -one to put together a 10-day support plan, whether that addresses attendance or engagement. Um, we will try our very best to 
again, make sure that there are no barriers or access issues, and then work to get your child back on track with the completion of their assignments. At tier two, <clears throat> this is really where the two roads of attendance versus participation diverge. So attendance becomes a state mandated metric that is, you know, that we're at risk of um, having to go into truancy. So at that point, if attendance is still being marked as absent each day because of a lack of uh, lesson completion, the social worker, Mr. Smith, will step in and truancy mitigation will be followed. If it's if it's attendance, if it's um, participation and engagement, meaning your child's earning attendance every day, they're being marked in attendance, but they're still very consistently missing work, not completing the full assignments, and they're at risk of failing a course, I will step in. I, I truly want to work with you to make sure you understand that students have to complete online work just as they complete work in the building to ensure that they are learning and mastering skills that teachers are informing their instruction based on the students' um, output, what they're able to complete, and, and subsequently earn a grade. It's how we determine whether a student is ready at the end of the year to move on to the next grade level. So I will step in at tier three. So let's try to you know, address any of these issues or concerns at the classroom level before any issues snowball to a point of no return. Having worked in the virtual environment for 12 years prior to coming to Gateway, I can assure you that when online assignments begin to snowball and collect, it becomes that much harder to dig out of it. So we do want to be proactive and supportive. Again, this is not a punitive um, or, or intended to be negative. It's truly supposed to be a, a partnership supporting each other to make sure the child is successful in the end. All right, so that's the lion's share of this presentation. I will go through some of these reminders very quickly, and then I will uh, thank you for, for viewing. So fall fun activities are underway actually this week, and it, it's starting with our pumpkin patch. We're here on October 20th, and the pumpkin patch is very successful. Thank you, PTO, for putting together a beautiful pumpkin patch simulation. Gate students are welcome to attend on Wednesday the 21st from 10 to 2. And then cohort B students will be welcome to visit the pumpkin patch during their classroom scheduled time on October 22nd. Following next week, our, um, well, beginning next week, I should say, our fall fun activities will continue. Cohort A will celebrate their fall fun party in the classroom on October 27th. And uh, cohort B will celebrate their fall fun party on the 30th of October and gate teachers will be scheduling their own gate teachers will be celebrating their own um, parties online on fall fun day that's the 27th or the 30th um, and even in the gate classrooms the students are welcome to wear fall themed PJs Halloween PJs if you celebrate um, or a costume, as long as it's free of accessories. We can't have any, um, you know, full full facial masks, especially since students still need to wear their, their cloth face covering and any accessories. Students also need to be able to navigate the building in their costume, use the restroom, participate in PE, um, eat at the lunchroom and, and go to recess all on their own. We're, with safe social distancing, we can't help students too much with their costumes. So they do need to be independent in wearing that. COVID-19, um, unfortunately, since the time that I delivered this live information session, we did have another positive case, uh, but safe social, safe um, contact tracing occurred and we feel very confident that it was an isolated incident, nothing that was at risk of spreading here in the building. Um, but Ramsey's doing a fantastic job with the school safety protocols. Students and faculty and staff are doing a phenomenal job at consistently wearing their face coverings. There are 15 or 10 minute mask breaks every 90 minutes. Kids are great about that. The building surfaces are being cleaned throughout the day thanks to Ms. Sherry, our daytime custodian. 
um, so safe social distancing is being upheld in the classrooms, at recess in the re or I'm sorry, in the lunchroom. And thank you, parents. Even so, so social distancing is being upheld during dismissal time as well. So thank you so much for that. I will continue to send, well, I'm sorry, the district will continue to send email notifications in the event that a student or staff person uh, does receive a, a positive COVID test. And then of course, subsequent contact tracing will continue to occur when we are notified of a positive COVID test. So if you are um, a part of the group or, or if you are identified as someone who may have been in close contact with a confirmed case, we will reach out to you directly with further instructions. Um, the district will be gathering in interest, I, I believe, as early as Wednesday on um, schooling options for next marking period. So I know there are some parents who are interested in exploring other options. Please look for that survey to be distributed so that you can um, make that selection. From there, I will have all the data I need to try to coordinate this and plan for our capacity in each classroom and, and online. PBIS, character education and SEL, these are all um, kind of swirling around the same uh, things, but positive behavior intervention support is a school-wide initiative that we have implemented at Ramsey. You may um, see, you know, we, we constantly are emphasizing we are Ram Fam. Uh, Ram Fam is beginning to kind of pop up on social media and in some of our uh, Ramsey clothing or facial coverings. And Ram stands for respectful, appropriate, and mature. So we try to remind students of those expectations in the building associated with their behavior, not only in the building, but also online. Are they being respectful? Are they being appropriate? And are they being mature? And in the next couple of weeks, we will be launching our our RAM ticket reward system, which allows students to earn rewards at the classroom level as well as the building level. Character education is an initiative led mostly by Mrs. Martin. She's our school counselor. And those her lessons and curriculum emphasize uh, the, the six pillars of character. That's trustworthiness, respect, responsibility, fairness, caring, and citizenship. So she, um, has cultivated a, a wonderful resource online in her own Google Classroom called the Counselor's Corner. And she also works with students in the building uh, on various activities that are pushed into the classroom as well as through the Google Classroom uh, to emphasize character education. Social emotional learning kind of brings it all together. Tier one universal instruction in a more proactive way helps students become exposed to real world connections and and cultures and historical backgrounds of people who exemplify good character, but who have also with, um, persevered through adversity and allow students to make relevant real world connections to how true human beings uh, kind of live in the world with others, with neighbors and in a civil way. So social emotional learning uh, goes into character education in that way. But the added piece is, you know, when faced with adversity, how are we regulating our emotions? How are we handling it in healthy ways? And so social emotional learning is, is also emphasized in the, our ways of how we express our emotions and share our emotions. And Mrs. Martin does a great job at leading the efforts around social emotional learning as well. But our teachers also implement social emotional learning skills and topics in their daily instruction. Each month we have a theme, uh, we have a bulletin board, that is going to be focused on various um, notable people who have been considered leaders in our, in our society and civility and through um, various cultural backgrounds, those who have led um, our world through different um, periods of time where there were struggles and they were um, leading the positive efforts. There's also going to be a read aloud each month that focuses on one of the six pillars of character. We'll have classroom lessons. And again, our, um, our walls in Ramsey will be outfitted with and decorated with those particular themes. So we are dedicated to ensuring that all students have relevant 
real world connections that they can relate to of people who live um, with high character and care about others and act in a civil way towards one another and to themselves. Local assessments. We are just now kicking off local uh, assessments at Ramsey. Those local assessments are Acadians and MAP. Acadians is a is a early reading fluency and early literacy skills assessment. It's a benchmark assessment. It's given three times a year, and the fall assessment is just coming, um, just coming up. The MAP assessment, which stands for Measure of Academic Progress is also a benchmark assessment that's given three times a year. And these are valuable assessments that help us inform our instruction and goal planning for students. Um, and we, it, it allows us to develop our daily instruction as well as any intervention or enrichment support for your child's personal learning plan. So those assessments really are hugely beneficial as an instructional tool. Um, the COGAT is a cognitive abilities test that is offered locally, meaning in our building, at second grade. But I'll, I'll give you more information as I receive it on whether or not we're going to be able to facilitate that online. And then as far as state assessments, the PSSA is not, uh, we haven't heard yet whether or not we will be facilitating that assessment this year. We'll go ahead and wrap up with some RamFam celebrations and some in, um, important dates coming up. Again, students have been incredibly resilient. I thank the parents at home for helping to support your children through this crazy pandemic. Um, they're, they're doing such a good job at adapting to some of these um, protocols that are a little restrictive with, their, with the face coverings, but they've been so great. So thank you so much for your efforts at home and support there. Uh, we truly are living a growth mindset at Ramsey. Teachers, faculty, staff, um, students, everyone is embracing and digging into the challenges with grace and patience and with that growth mindset, that true, we can do this together. We're not going to be perfect, but we're still going to show up every day and try our best. Um, PTO has been phenomenal at supporting us and helping us to celebrate holiday uh, parties with and, and themed events while navigating the safe social distancing protocols. They've also been instrumental in supplying us with some supplemental um, learning tools. Brain Pop and Brain Pop Junior has been a subscription that was subsidized by our PTO. So thank you, parents. Teachers have been great. They've applied for various classroom grants, and some of our teachers have been awarded those grants to help enrich the, um, the classroom environment for their, their students. Um, parents, again, thank you so much for your excellent communication and feedback as we refine and improve our processes here at Ramsey. And we are always trying to find creative ways to engage students in fun activities. So please share any suggestions that you have. Some general reminders about Zoom lessons. We are dedicated to safety and security. Teachers put passcodes on their, on their um, Zoom classrooms and certainly work to keep a classroom management protocol underway, code of conduct in their class. Uh, but please remember just for safe keeping and for um, your own knowledge that um, it is, it is a teacher's virtual classroom. So we do wanna to work together to limit distractions, make sure microphones are muted when not speaking because a lot of the background noise is picked up and can be distracting to the learning process um, in the instructional process, I should say. Now, also remember that when a child's camera is on, the camera kind of sees every, whatever the camera sees, the students and the teacher in the classroom see. So nothing has happened that's been reported to me, but it's just important for you to be aware of that so that we can um, be proactive in the use of the cameras rather than reacting to anything that comes up. We've had our Alice drills. Those successfully were completed last week. The marking period midpoint was also last week and uh, our PTO meetings will occur every other month. So this, is, this information here is outdated now, but please follow the Ramsey PTO Facebook page because that is going to be 
um, continuously updated. Our pumpkin patch is underway and our fall fun activities are next week. Uh, we're looking forward to those parties beginning on the 27th and then again on the 30th. And keep in mind the last day of the first marking period is November 9th. So after this meeting, uh, after this recording is all cleaned up, I will be sending it along with the G Classroom for parents um, using the iPad training that was delivered live on September 30th. So you'll have two recordings attached and also a letter explaining some of those that information. Thanks for tuning in. I hope it was informative. Please let me know if you have any questions.